Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. And King of Floors, your vinyl, laminate, and engineered flooring superstore. Wednesday, the week is flying by. That's what happens when you're having fun. All of our guests today are sponsored by the O's Marketing Team at Royal LePage, the go-to source for all your Central Vancouver Island real estate needs. Find out more at wearerealestate.com. Uh, you can text us, by the way. Is it just me coming up in the next hour? Text us to 604-294-94. Just ahead of Ian McIntyre, you had a text? Yeah, just before you, Ian McIntyre. Uh, JT Miller is frustrated. Don't blame him. The team is bad, was not supported by upper management, and the coach was left to flounder. That's Scotty in uh, Maple Ridge. So there you go. He's frustrated. It's been a horrible year. They're 29th in the NHL standings. Uh, geez, I wonder why he's not in a great mood. Thank you, Scotty. Uh, Ian McIntyre joining us now for th for the first time on Don. Yeah, Dolly, he is best guy, from, best looking guy on TV. Ian, from, uh, Ian McIntyre. Well, that's not saying much. Certainly the best looking guy <laughs> here right now. Yeah, as long uh, as you, as as long as you watch uh, TV with the sound muted, I, I look awesome. You're yes, right. you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> and then I and then I speak, and it spoils the effect. By the way, congratulations to you guys. I knew that if you persisted in this business long enough, eventually you'd find something that you're good at, and uh, you guys are great. So oh, thank I, you, I'm, ha I'm, thank I'm you. happy that uh, you've landed on your feet the way you have. Thank you. Rick and I have had about uh, 20 other jobs before this. Are you saying we weren't <laughs> all that good until this show? We, we did bounce around a bit. I, I, I get that. Well, you know, journeyman. That, there you, you go. Read into it what you will, Donnie. Yeah. Survival yeah. mode. Still getting a paycheck. Uh, <laughs> Oilers over the Canucks 4-1, uh, uh, and, and you weren't the only one, Ian, but you t uh, tweeted out some uh, criticism of, of J.T. Miller. What didn't you like? Well, I just don't like uh, that. Well, the big thing I don't like is is that this has been a recurring uh, problem, uh, and, and not just with J.T. Miller, uh, with the team as well, but Miller is such an influential player. He's so impactful. He's so much at the center of everything that it probably stands out a little more, his mistakes. And we've been seeing these mistakes uh, more or less all, all season. But what compounds it in Miller's case is that he, he seems to allow that frustration he has then to affect, you know, his next shift and the shift after that. And, and listen, I, I understand guys uh, are get angry. And, you know, if the building's got 20,000 people in it, you don't notice the tantrums. But you do, you, you're always going to notice when a guy follows, uh, you know, a bad shift like his giveaway on the first goal, and he comes out on his next shift and takes a penalty because he wasn't moving his feet and he reached in and he high sticks a guy. And now, uh, Directly and indirectly, that penalty leads to two goals. And suddenly, a, a game that you led one nothing, you're down, you're down three one. And and so, you know, Miller is is that good? Like he he mm -hmm. he is usually at the forefront of them winning. And last night, he was he was one of the primary reasons that they lost. And I I don't know if you were uh, listening or watching earlier. I'm I'm sure you were. But um, I, I, I made this comparison. Ryan Kessler was a very good player for a significant amount of time, uh, but there was this thought that he had to be—he had to let things go. He had to uh, become a different player attitude-wise. He did, and he became a more valuable Canuck at that point. Does uh, J.T. Miller fall into that category? I, I think he does, and I've actually—and this just shows how how bright you are, Donnie, because I've I've mentioned that as well that. That there, uh, there's a comparison here between between uh, Miller and and Ryan Kessler, and I think you could put you know Todd Bertuzzi kind yeah. of into that yeah. category as well. These you know uh, guys who are emotional and and they have anger and uh, you know they have they're Big so talented they, they're yeah. so talented as well that they they they're always having an impact on the guys around them and the, and the guys in the room. And I think it's a very good comparison. And yes, I do think uh, in those other cases, both Bertuzzi and Kessler 
had to evolve a little bit. But the, I, I think the really important thing in those cases as well is that they had players around them. You know, they weren't, they weren't the predominant uh, voice or figure on those teams. Mm-hmm. You know, Todd Bertuzzi, it was Marcus Naslin, Ryan Kessler. There were, there were the Sedins. And we know in both, both of those teams, there were other really prominent players, um, you know, defense at forward as well. So it, the influence of those guys wasn't as great, in my opinion, as what JT Miller's influence is right now. Partly because uh, uh, Elias Pettersson is is out of the lineup, partly just because all the core players on this team are so young, you know the guys that they're building around, and even even Bo Horvat, he's he's not, uh, I mean he's a very experienced player now, but he's still only 25 years old, and and so uh, J T Miller is, is is in this leadership position and and he's also a player because of his his age like he he's 28 so he's he's respected as part of that older group but he's young enough that these young guys and some of the core players they gravitate towards him so he's hugely influential to the group and and I can live with I can live with you know the risk part of his game because the reward part of his game is so high when he's on, but it's just that uh, you know comportment and and how he handles you know a bad shift and what his frustration turns into. I think you know I think he still needs to evolve a little bit there. But it would help if the group was stronger around him. Obviously. Speaking of that, Ian, I, looking at the overall standings, the Canucks are 29th right now. Only Anaheim and Buffalo have fewer points. Like. I, I just we're told that two more years, Ian, and it's it's going to be fixed. But you're 29th overall. Can you fix it in two years? Uh, t- take a look at the future, Ian. How long is it going to take to fix this mess? Yeah, uh, I don't know, and I'm not good with crystal balls. And and I I think it was probably a, a mistake for any GM to put a defined yeah. timeline on when the team is supposed to be good. What I'll say is right now. Uh, and, and this isn't a news flash. Right now, they're not close. Mm. But what they have are these really good foundational players. Now, do they have enough of them? Who knows? Uh, you can always use more, right? Yeah. If you can find, and maybe maybe that's going to be the silver lining of, of this season when we look back on it. Is if they end up with a top five draft pick and they get another core player where, that they you know, didn't think they were going to be adding to that group, but they have the core players. You guys are old enough to remember some Canuck teams that didn't have the core players. Yeah. And, and when you're trying to find core players, uh, and, and this team was in that position not long ago, you know, before, before the uh, Brock Besser showed up, you know, Bo Horvat was the only young guy they had who looked like he was going to be an impactful player. Um, it's a lot harder to build when you don't have the core pieces. You know, when you're trying to find those guys, instead of trying to find the guys who are going to support the core pieces, the job is a lot, is a lot bigger. So, you know, right now they're not close. Uh, thank goodness they do have some excellent uh, young players, but the job is now to build around them. And that has kind of been the job the last couple of years, and it hasn't gone very well. And it needs to go a lot better for the Canucks to be in a position where they can compete for something again. We're running out of time here. We're going to deal. I with know. I talked too long. No, 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 no. It's not it's, you. Ian. It's it's Dolly Wall's uh, clock management. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're, we're going to talk about Abbotsford in the next segment, but let's focus on this while we've got you in. What did you sure. think of Jack Rathbone's NHL debut? Oh, I think it's I think it's terrific. I mean, it was 12 minutes. I don't think his debut was terrific, but it was. There was nothing wrong with it. He had a couple of flashes uh, where you could see his skill. What I what I really liked and I noticed right away was how engaged he was, how willing he was in his own end to compete for the puck, compete for space in front of his own net, which which is great. But he obviously is a guy who can moves around the ice really well has a high-end skill level, and uh, I hope we see him a lot more because he, he's one of these players 
when you look at, uh, say, a prospect list, and there's a lot of guys you don't know, can they even be NHL players? And, and that's a big question because most of them don't become NHL players of, yeah. of, the, of the mass who are drafted. Um, but in Rathbone's case, you wonder not only can he become an NHL player, but how good an NHL player is going to be. And so he's really important to their future. And it's good to see that he's going to get – uh, at least a few games this season because that's going to help them be better next season, which should help the club be better too. Ian, we're going to carpool to Abbotsford next year. It's going to be <laughs> – we're going to carpool. Are. We're going to carpool. And ho- and hopefully uh, the building is full of fans because yes. Yes. If, uh, if Dr. Henry allows it, yeah. that, place will, that place will be jumping. I think yeah. it's a, a great move. I agree. I, I can't see you, Ian, but I can just tell by the way you're talking, your body language during that interview was just excellent. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for this Ian well I have I have no influence but yeah. thank you okay. thanks Ian appreciate it we'll get you See on you again soon